Now, let's consider the subject of food and wine matching. I have the deepest admiration for my colleagues who have written great books about the ideal pairings for particular foods or particular wines. Others who have researched the molecules inside various foods, various wines, and kind of worked out what might go, what might not. But I feel that it can be quite off-putting for wine consumers to be given the idea that there is just one perfect match for every wine. There is only one circumstance in which I would expect someone to tell me the perfect wine to drink with a given dish. And that's if I were ever in an absolutely tip-top restaurant whose menu doesn't change, has a qualified wine waiter, sommelier, who knows those dishes by heart, knows what's in the cellar by heart, and should be able to suggest to me, say, three different perfect wines with each dish at different price levels. But I think in real life, things are very different. We have something to eat, we haven't had that bottle, and we might decide to put them together. And, you know, if it's not an absolutely perfect match, what's the worst that can happen? If it slightly clashes, then just have a glass of water in between mouthfuls or a, a little munch of something neutral, like bread. I mean, there is no thunderbolt from on high that comes down to strike you if you happen to put the wrong wine with, with a certain food or the other way around. I also think that over time, if you're interested in taste, then you have a little computer in your head which you're not aware of that if you want to eat a certain thing it kind of guides you on the basis of experience towards a wine that will probably go with it pretty well. I mean there are various rules that we've all grown up with like with meat, meaty dishes, you drink red wine, with fish you drink white wine but rules are there to be broken aren't they and certainly with fish I wouldn't limit anyone to white wine. Um, I think there are lots of fish dishes that are really good with a, a fairly light red, uh, particularly Pinot Noir is, is lovely with salmon or tuna or something like that, you know, sort of fairly substantial uh, fish. Maybe with the simplest dish of kind of poached white fish, which is rather neutral, it would be a bit weird to have a very tannic young red because it, it would kind of overwhelm it. And often it's more a question of matching the weight of the dish to the weight of the wine than, than a colour coding, really. If you have a very tannic, chewy, young red, and you want to make it taste less tannic and young, you want to sort of add years of maturation to it, serve it with a chewy food, which is often meat, but it could be maybe a kind of lentil bake or something like that. And that red would go with that sort of dish. But also, you could have a very full-bodied white with a steak, you know, a really big California Chardonnay or a Condria from the Northern Rhone made from a, a really ripe Viognier grapes. So um, don't, don't be too colour restricted. The only thing I would say about a particular colour of wine is that if in those circumstances that are so common, you are in a quite a big party in a, a restaurant and everybody orders a different dish, then rosé is one of the most versatile wines. A fairly full-bodied dry rosé can go with a very wide range of foods. And incidentally, rosé wines get their colour by being made from red wine grapes that are left in contact with the must, with the sort of embryonic wine for only a short time, which just tints it rather than deeply colours it, uh, as in red wine making. There are also sort of sensible geographic combinations, like um, oysters and muscadet, say, is a fairly kind of classic thing with oysters from Brittany or up in the northwest of France. Um, in around Lyon, they have a great tradition of uh, saucisson, like salami, 
and that can be absolutely lovely with a, a full-bodied, one of the better Beaujolais, a sort of crew Beaujolais. Um, these are a slightly annoying Beaujolais that come from specific villages and may well not have the word Beaujolais on them. Things like Morgan, Moulin, Bon, Fleury, things like that. And in Austria, its characteristic grape, Grunefeld Lina, is quite full-bodied. So that would be another full-bodied white that you could serve with a huge array of, of dishes, including sort of quite meaty ones. And in Alsace, which is way up almost on the German border, but in France at this point in its history, um, their full-bodied whites they serve with a huge array of quite hearty local dishes, you know, often with game um, and quite meaty things. Um, so, you know, be, be adventurous. And I know another rule which is made to be broken is red wine with cheese. More and more wine sophisticated people are choosing white wines to drink with cheese because there can be quite a clash between the, the tannins in red wine and an awful lot of cheeses. I mean, of course, cheese is not cheese. There are all sorts of different flavours and textures. Um, but there is a, certainly another classic geographical combination, which is Sancerre, or perhaps any dry Sauvignon Blanc, with a, a fresh goat's cheese. That's a, a lovely combination as well. And with cheese, don't forget sweet wines. That can be a fantastic combination of the sort of sweetness and saltiness variety. It's a great point in the meal, too, if presumably cheese is at the end, and you've had maybe a white wine, then a red wine, and then you're just ready for a nice little mouthful of sweet wine. Can be port, but it could be a dessert wine, you know, a, a sauterne or, or a, a sweet Riesling or any kind of sweet wine can be lovely with cheese. But I, I do urge you just to be not too rule bound and, and don't think that you can go wrong, that, that you know, that it's a terrible social faux pas. Um, it's great for people who, who really want to get it right and are, and are not intimidated by the whole thing. But don't let them intimidate you, please.